G'day everybody, welcome to Lawn Porn. This video is talking about transitioning from a rotary to a cylinder mower. Let's get your lawn on. If you're watching this video, you're probably in the mode of looking at cylinder mowers, looking at your first cylinder mower. So this video is really gonna help you. I'm gonna talk about both styles of mowers and their pros and cons, how to use a cylinder mower, especially if you're a first timer. And right at the end of this, I'll give you a whole basic yearly plan to help you get into the world of cylinder mowing. So the first thing that we're going to look at is the rotary mower. It's a mower that most people have. And look, these are really great. They're very cheap, very cheap to run. Very, very simple design. It'll have an engine of some sort. An electric is really coming on the scene, which is quite handy. You'll have a cutter underneath. Two blades, four blades, sometimes a twin blade like this one. And look, they're very, very simple. And they're also uh, cheap to run. You don't have to do much other than change the blades and uh, just do a little bit of engine maintenance. And with the advent of battery and electric, that's even got cheaper. These will mow from about 20 mils to all the way up to 90 mils. There's all sorts of different models you can get. You can get ones that are just push ones and they're fairly cheap, around about $300, $400 right up to about a thousand dollars which will get you a self-propelled one like this. I had a great time with the Tiff Tough cooch that I've got out the back. Nice and tidy with a 25 millimeter mow uh, once a week but if you want to go and get lines in your lawn and that sort of like that bowling green look well you do need a cylinder mower. So you've been looking at a cylinder mower for a while and seeing all these lovely lawns with stripes. If you're looking for a low clean cut and obviously the stripe definition you really have to get a cylinder mower. They're much more expensive to buy and they're much more expensive to maintain. There's a few reasons for this. It's a more complex machine for one. Number two, it's got a reel down here which matches up to a bottom blade. So the two blades come across each other and cut like a pair of scissors. So it's a precision machine and that requires quite a lot of maintenance, sharpening the blades often and also looking after the engine. $500 being your rotary mower is about the entry league for your sort of half, de half decent rotary mowers. You sort of your entry leg for a cylinder mower is around about $2,000, $2,500. So let's talk about the advantages of one and the other. So the rotary, that's cheap. It's easy to run. If you've got very long grass, it'll handle that. It will not handle short mows, but still it can go down to uh, around about 20 mils quite neatly. Anything lower than that, it gets a little bit choppy. If you're in the general sort of leg, this is absolutely fine. If you want the cylinder mower look with the lines, doing real low mows, this will go down to six mils. It won't cut long grass. There's more expense and it's more expensive to run, that's for sure. The way that these machines cut is totally different as well. This cuts by one blade coming along and hitting the grass plant at a very, very high speed. So it's basically pulverizing it and it leaves quite a jagged cut on the leaf blade. This, however, is two blades coming together like scissors and it's a very clean cut. In regards to the two mowers, one's not really better than the other, they're just different. When you get your first cylinder mower, don't get rid of your rotary mower because you'll need that from time to time, especially when the grass gets really long. And now to part two of the video, learning how to use your cylinder mower. Generally, cylinder mowers will have two modes of operation, a mode of operation to make it go forward, to make the roller turn, and a mode of operation for the cylinder blades to cut. It's got two controls here. This is the drive control here, and this is the control that, if you engage it, will engage the reel. And you can actually run the two together. So what you need to do is you need to set your mower at the highest height, and do a few runs without using the cylinder, but just using the roller just to get used to it and getting used to how to complete your turns and things like that. Your next couple of runs, you're gonna have the cylinder going, but it's gonna be so high that you're not gonna be cutting anything anyway, so it's all good even if you make a mistake. And you just go up and down the same again just to get used to that. Once you've got that going, you mow your area. 
get your height sorted. So lower your blades down, just without the engine running or anything like that, just check that the bottom blade is cutting just that little bit of grass. You don't want to be taking too much off of it, obviously, because it's just a slight cut that you want. It's your first time. So you don't want to be cutting it real heavy or anything like that. It's definitely the one third rule, <laughs> more like a one fourth rule. You just want to be just taking that little bit off of the top. So you may your area doing a trim pass first, basically just going on the outside of your area. Please pay no attention to my retaining wall. It only got done a couple of days before I shot the vid. And then you want to go up and down in your desired pattern. And the lines, they're not caused by a difference of height or anything. They're actually caused by the roller bending over the blade in a certain direction and the sunlight going off of the blades, uh, bent over, creates the effect. So make sure you stick around to the end of this video because I'm going to give you a complete, easy, yearly plan for your lawn and your cylinder mowing experience. So let's look a little more closely at this mower. This mower is an Alec Kensington 17H. These are distributed by adeturf.com.au is where you can find them. This is one of many types of cylinder mowers that are available on the market. And this is what you would call a domestic cylinder mower. This one's quite clever. It's got a cartridge system, but I'll go into that a little bit later in the video. This one will mow from as low as six mils up to about 32 mils. This is suitable for cooch, kaikuya, zoysia, and some buffaloes. So your first cylinder mower, you're probably gonna land in the domestic sort of range because you wanna spend about $2,000, $2,500. Look, you can get secondhand ones, but they're quite hard to find and the market is, is quite high. They're basically the same as new mowers in price. If you wanted a putting green or a bowling green and very short cuts of like two, three millimeters, you're really gonna be looking at golf greens mowers which are you know, quite expensive, $10,000 now. You might be lucky enough to get a greens mower off of a golf club or something like that for a cheap price, like two and a half, three thousand dollars $3,000 for you know, like a, a, a Toro or something like that. However, those are very cheap for a reason because the new replacements are around about 16 grand. The price of parts is very high for those. So while it might be working, it might seem like a good deal at the time, down the track you're going to realise that it's quite expensive and much more expensive to maintain a greens mower. So a lot of people will be in this sort of uh, category having a, a domestic mower which will do six millimetres up to 32 and, and look six millimetres is a real nice cut. Okay it might not be a, uh, a putting green cut but you can still have quite a good bit of fun playing putt putt on your lawn at six mil. However you know, the purists of the, uh, of the game might uh, have a complaint or two. This is not the purpose of the mower to be a greens mower. It's the purpose of a mower that's in that range, six to 32 mils, a nice ornamental cut. One really great thing about the Alec, which is what I'm using in this video, is that has interchangeable cartridges. Things like scarifiers and verti cutters, which will really help control the thatch in your lawn so that you can maintain a low look without any thatchy or ugly looking brown spots. It really helps the health of the lawn as well. A thatchy lawn always looks pretty crappy and puts the lawn under a lot of stress. So part three of this video is now the yearly plan that I promised. Now before I get into it, you really do need to flatten out your surface. When I first got the Alec mower, I used it on the back lawn, which is uh, Tiff Tough. It had just been put down a few months prior and wasn't really flat as such. It looked all right with a 20 mil cut. Uh, the lines came up and look, if you're happy with that result, then you know go for it. But it will really look much better if the surface is flattened out. So every year, at least once a year during the growing season, you will need to do a top dress and flatten out. I did my area uh, a month ago with my Tiff Tough and that was during the autumn. So the grow in wasn't particularly fast, but it's come in and already the mows that I'm doing with it are looking that much better. Okay, so 
a yearly plan. Well, I am talking cooch here and you can translate it. It's totally transferable to kaikuya, zoysia and buffalo. Just that your mowing heights for those lawn types will differ. You can go very, very low with cooch. Buffalo, you will need to uh, go a little bit higher to really make it look fantastic. So starting off talking about mowing heights in September, October, November, which is spring here in Australia, my mowing heights are between five mil at the start of the season, going up to about 8 mil. During the summer I'm looking at about 8 to 10 mil and I'll go up to 12 mil near the end of summer. Why? Because when it comes to autumn that's when I will be looking to get uh, a higher height of cut. Uh, it looks better for one but it also increases the photosynthesis of the plant because there's less sun available so I'm trying to get the best out of that and it's making a great weed mat so during the autumn, it starts off 12 mil and goes up to about 15 mil. During the winter, obviously it's dormant. I'll hardly be doing any mowing. Uh, I'll be growing between 15 to 20 mil. Again, for more photosynthesis and creating a better weed mat. Mowing frequency in spring, start of the growing season, it'll be a, a couple times a week and right at the end of spring, it could be three or four times. Then during the summer, that's when it's most busy and it really depends on your growing style and how much time you've got, obviously, as well. Anything from two times a week up to five times a week, especially when it's very, very hot and you're trying to maintain a low, clean cut. During the autumn, it starts off quite busy because for me, especially, autumn is early on is very, uh, very hot still. Then when the uh, days get shorter and the temperatures go down, the lawn will start to slow. So it'll go down to like two times a week, one times a week. By the end of autumn, it's around uh, once, uh, once a week or once a fortnight. Then going into winter, well look, honestly, you'll only do a couple of mows a month at best. Um, there are some times where I don't touch the lawn for a good six to eight weeks uh, without having to mow it because it's not growing, it doesn't need to. So every month from spring through to early autumn, you'll be using soil wetter once a month. You'll wanna get uh, water into the soil down to the root, saving uh, evaporation. Speaking of watering, uh, we're aiming for deep, infrequent waterings. Uh, early on in the spring, you'll be watering deeply early in the morning, once a week, so about an hour on my sprinklers will give me about an inch of water. When it starts getting a bit hotter, I go to twice a week. Obviously, when I'm doing things like a renovation, which is what I'll speak about in a sec, you will need to do a thing called syringe watering, which is watering a few times a day, just as the lawn recovers from a uh, scarify aerate and top dress. A great way to beat weeds is to use what's called pre-emergent herbicides. So I'll use a pre-emergent herbicide around about mid spring and uh, early autumn and that's just to stamp out the weeds that are seasonal like your things like winter grass for winter and things like crabgrass for the summer. Any other weeds that come up I use a selective herbicide suitable for my lawn type. I use bow and arrow uh, mostly for any broadleaf weeds that come up uh, during the season. I've got a few that come up now so I'm gonna have to start using that soon. So fertilizing, look let's keep it easy. You can go as deep as you want. I've got a program that really goes into full-on weekly application. But really what you want to do is in spring, you want to start off with a granular fertilizer that's slow release and uh, repeat that uh, every month is a nice easy way to go about it. When you get more into fertilizing, you can fertilize with uh, foliar applications which are much more effective on the plant. It's feeding through the leaves, it doesn't use water, there's no leach of nutrients. It's just the most efficient way to fertilize. So if you are looking at fertilizers, look for one that's got a small prill like Four Seasons. The reason being is that you want that small prill to be lower in the sward and not be sucked up in your next mow. Four Seasons will give you a great result as well because it's a dual controlled slow release, slow release nitrogen and potassium for growth and protection. And it's also got iron, which will give you that nice deep dark green that you see on the lawn pawn page. So when it comes to mowing your area, edge with a solid edger, then do a whipper snip just to neaten it up just that little bit more. Blow all that stuff onto your lawn, do a mow, do a double pass. Uh, double pass is great for 
defining the lines. You don't have to change your height or anything like that. And if you've got some wobbles or anything, you can fix them up. But it just makes the lines come out just that little bit better. After that, just uh, blow again and you will get a fantastic result. Well, I hope you like this video. Definitely, if you got something out of it, give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. It'll help me grow. And watch out for future videos because Tom the dog has arrived and we're going to see how he's going to go with the back lawn and everything we're going to do to make the dog and the lawn coexist quite happily. All right, everybody, get your lawn on. Thanks for watching. We'll start it up. Yeah, just a minute. Okay. Okay. Hi, how are you going? Oh, he's very good. Always photo bomber. <laughs> <laughs>